Hey guys, Henny and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be looking at some pretty cool effects you can find in Maya. I think this is actually the first time we're even using the effects tab at all. Ever. Ever. <laughs> the first time we ever clicked it. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to be looking at a few different shattering effects. Maya has a really cool built-in shattering tool, which is eons old now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not super elegant, but it gets the job done and you can get some pretty interesting effects. So first, you've got to switch to the effects tab. And then we have under effects, again, we have a little guy called Shatter. It's also fun to play around with the other ones. They're not incredibly practical, but you know, <laughs> there are some cool things you can do there. Like I remember doing an old digital tutors tutorial with the <laughs> fire one there. That's <laughs> it bring, brings back memories. Yeah. So if we click on the menu items for uh, Shatter, now we can see we have three different ones. We have Surface Shatter, Solid Shatter, and Crack Shatter. Surface Shatter will shatter uh, an object and not really care about the surface. Uh, surf solid shatter will be like breaking. You have a surface like this and it's made of glass and it will be actually like breaking the glass. And this will, the next one means that we can select a point and it's going to shatter from that, like you're breaking a window. So with surface shatter and solid shatter, one like uh, makes a single sided geometry and the other one doesn't? Yes, exactly. Mm. That's the one. So if we look at uh, default settings, mostly default settings, default settings, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we select this guy here. There is, there aren't really, you know, you see his, his close piece of geometry with this. And then we set this to hide. That's going to hide the original surface so that we don't, so that we don't accidentally delete it or select it afterwards. Yeah, it's good to be able to go back to it if your shatter doesn't turn out like you wanted it to. Yeah, exactly. Then we just hit apply. And now you can see it's been triangulated. You want to triangulate your model because otherwise it's not going to cut across diagonally. It's going to just follow the, the quad pattern. Yeah. So now you can see what, what happened. First, it hit the original one, but also it did this. Gave you a pretty cool shatter. As a note, you have to delete history for your objects. If you have history, it's, it's going to fail. And also you need your topology to be pretty even. Yeah. Otherwise it's it's not gonna work as well. And like the higher res your, your object is, the finer the scatter is gonna be. Yeah. Exactly. So then it has more geometry to scatter in between. Exactly. So we can also do, um, we can set, the sh uh, we can change the, the shard count, just how many pieces is gonna be in. And you can also d enable and disable tri triangulate surface. You most likely want this on. Yeah, otherwise you're going to get a very blocky shatter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then we have solid shatter. This is a really cool one. This is what I've been using the most. And uh, here we do the same thing. We set the original surface to hide. And then we can just see what happens when we hit apply. And now you can see that something happened. Ooh. Ooh. So now we actually have thickness to our shatter, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So this is what I've been using, where we, you, we have to smash a bottle and... Uh, you, you can just get different shapes from this. Yeah. Keep in mind that every single time you do this, you get a different result. So if, you, if you're doing this again now, let's just move this guy around. So do this again, now you're going to get a different result. You can also change the seed amount so that you you can just keep trying until you get something interesting. <laughs> Cause, uh, welcome to CG. <laughs> welcome to CG. Because <laughs> you don't really have any control whatsoever on this. You uh, you purely just hit shatter, and now you just see you get different results. Yeah, you can again keep shattering these shapes just mm. to subdivide it even more. I really recommend that you keep it fairly high res, because if you don't, then you know it's not going to give you any interesting results whatsoever. Yeah, you can get some pretty interesting results with shattering shattered elements. Yeah, already. you can. Um, that could actually be really cool. And then we can do uh, the last one, crack shatter, which is a pretty awesome name. <laughs> Sounds like an illegal substance. Uh, crack shatter. Crack <laughs> Let's shatter. do some crack shatter. <laughs> <laughs> we do the same thing again. We set the original surface to hide, so it's going to hide it. And now the difference here is that we got to actually select the vertex. And then we hit uh, apply. And now you can see that it's, it's not really simulating. It's just <laughs> randomly selecting edges. So sometimes you get really cool results. Sometimes you get really whack results from this. 
And we talked about like this being a legacy tool. It's pretty slow. Yeah, it is. Like it, it, it needs to go through each vertex from vertex to vertex and break it up. So it's uh, it's not the fastest tool. And if you have a higher risk piece of geo, then it's definitely going to take a while. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure there are more elegant solutions out there, yeah. which are not from the 90s. But you know, it's, it's still pretty cool. Like if you want to quickly shatter some glass, you can yeah. do that. And it's built into Maya. Exactly. And now you can you can keep you can keep shattering stuff. You know, you can select an edge and then you can keep just shattering this to just to get more subdivision into it or more in, more interest into it. We can also, uh, let's just redo this. We can also increase uh, the edge jagginess just to, to get something more interesting. Select the same point, hit apply. And now you can see it goes crazy whack and it didn't work out so well for it. <laughs> <laughs> it got stuck. It got stuck. So let's try that again. I mean, yeah, when you're when you're simulating like nature, it's uh, hard. <laughs> Let's but take the edge jagging and sit down a little. <laughs> I think it's working now. I think it's working now. So, I mean, with tools like this that are written in, I don't even know, pre-mill stuff, probably. Yeah. And uh, it just it just takes a while sometimes. But you can definitely get some cool results. You really can. So now you can, you know, you can move stuff up. And there's a little bonus part of this chapter. <laughs> this is kind of cool. Because now you can... You can create use this shatter to create kind of like um kind of like a topo topographical environment. Yeah, you have like some terrain all of a sudden. Exactly. So this is something we just found. We just played around with just just trying to make the vi this video that you could actually create something kind of cool just from just from creating something shatter like this. It, it, this reminds me very much of uh, a map, the map from Westworld, where they're just uh, they're just yeah. seeing the entire desert. So you know you can shatter this even more. You could create some more interesting effects from this. That's actually what this uh, tutorial was about, how to create the map from Westworld. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Move it around and yeah, there's just a bunch of different cool things you can use to this. I yeah. probably wouldn't even use this for like shattering. I'll probably actually use this to create like stylized environments. And you can do the, take the plane and shatter it in different ways and get really, really cool, cool shapes. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for shattering. This has been pretty useful for me recently on a project mm -hmm. where we're doing. So we just want to share this little ancient tool with everyone. <laughs> so if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification button as well.